Hi guys and girls and welcome back to Zenith Minis. My name is Greg and this is episode 6 of Build and Paint the Hobby Show that answers all of your hobby questions like how important is it to paint using thin coats? What size brush is best for a certain job? Are all of the Shadow Spear models actually brand new sculpts? <laughs> and how will World Eater fans react if they have to play with the same old berserkers for another 20 years? <laughs> but we're not here to make any pacts with the Dark Gods. The Omissiah is with us and we're ready to paint the Skatari Ranger. So if you're brand new to the channel then you can catch up using the link above or if you're just ready to get stuck in we're gonna kick things off with how to paint the Skatari legs. First up we're getting those base colours down and for the clothing I'm using Eshin Grey with a size 2 brush. If you want to see the brushes I use, then check out episode 1 of the series where I cover them in a bit more detail. The aim here is to get a smooth base coat, so by using thin layers of paint you can build this up over 2 or possibly 3 coats. So by painting in this way it means that all those details stay crisp and the base coat is a smooth surface to paint those highlights on top of. You can thin your paints down with water or with a medium. In this video I'm using Lamia medium and I'm also using a wet palette. Once the first coat is done, apply a second coat in exactly the same way and, at this stage, you don't need to really worry about being neat. Next up we're basing on the metallics and for the first part I'm using Lead Belcher with a size 1 brush. To start, I'm painting the ranger's robotic legs. I'm using a size 1 brush at this stage because the details are a bit smaller and I also want to avoid getting any paint onto the area we've just completed. But don't worry about it if you do, you can just tidy that up using Eshin Grey once you've finished painting in the metallics. Once you're done with one leg, move on to the other, but also paint in the rib tube between his legs and some of the metallic panels. In this video I'm using the Rathcore painting handle, which is a great way to get your model at a variety of different angles, but also if you're like me and have shaky hands then you can use this handle to stabilise your hand as you're painting. Now that the first coat is completed, we're going to paint on a second coat and we're doing this in the exact same way. And just use your best judgement when it comes to how many coats to apply. Now we're basing with Balthazar Gold and picking out some of the smaller details such as knee pads, spot colour on the armour panels and a socket. Metallics can be thicker than normal paint so make sure you're shaking that pot to mix the paint thoroughly and you may also need to thin them down a bit more than usual. Again you're going to want to be neat here because you don't want to get any of the gold onto the parts that are already painted like the grey or the silver. Having a fine point on your brush can help so make sure you're twisting that brush in your palette before you paint. Now that the main base colours are done, we can start shading the model. I'm covering most of the model with Nuln Oil, but I'm avoiding the knee pads and legs as we're going to shade these a different colour. By using different shades for different colours, you can achieve more subtle effects. 
If you apply a wash and you want it to be a bit darker, just wait for it to dry and apply a second layer. Now that the Nuttin Oil has been applied, we're gonna shade the legs and knees with Agrax Earthshade. This will leave a brown, oily look which I feel really suits the narrative Yadmech who performs sacred rituals over the mechanical parts and will clean and maintain the robotic enhancements on a fairly regular basis. If you find you've used too much shade then you can always mop up any excess using a clean, damp brush. You can buy a specific shade brush from Games Workshop slash Citadel but for this I'm just using my size 1 brush. Next, we're basing the smoother tube with Sotech Green. I think I'm gonna be painting the robes Screamer Pink, so a spot color of bright turquoise or bright blue will really complement that color. So I'm still using a size one brush and you're gonna to wanna to be as neat as possible painting this on. If you make a mistake at this stage, it can be a bit frustrating to fix, so just make sure you've got a fine point on your brush. With the base and the shade complete, we now need to return to those original base colours and apply them again. For differences this time, you're going to want to thin your paint down a bit more and taking a size 1 brush, you want to then feather the paint onto the raised surfaces. By aiming for the raised areas and avoiding any recesses, this helps build up natural light and dark areas. You can of course apply a recess shade instead and that will reduce the need to reapply the base colours. However, by performing an all over wash and thinning down those base colours, you can feather them on to build up a transitional effect between the light and dark areas. Now we're going to repeat the same process with lead belcher. You want to be careful and only pick out the areas where the light will catch. The edges of an armor panel can be obvious but the curves of the ranger's legs and groin armor can be more difficult to determine. Now we're starting to highlight, so I'm using the size 0 Winsor & Newton brush and I'm thinning down some iron breaker. Using the point of the brush, paint the extremes of the silver components, so only the parts where the light is going to catch. And if anyone actually knows why the Admech needs groin armor, then let me know in the comments, because if you're gonna replace your legs with robot ones, well, well, you get where I'm going. <laughs> so you need to be quite precise when you're painting the tube in and make sure you're knocking any of the paint into those recesses. And lastly, we were applying a final highlight of Stormhost Silver. And guys, less is certainly more at this stage, and you only want to be picking out the extreme of the extreme. So things like rivets and corners, you definitely don't want to overdo it with the final highlight. If you do make a mistake at this point, see if you can go back to a previous layer and use it to cover it up.
Now we're going to repeat the process for the gold parts of the model. Using a thin down Balthazar gold, feather it onto the knees and armour panels. As we've used Agrax Urshid and Nuln Oil to shade these metallic parts, this will take away that metallic finish. But as you're layering this paint back on, you should see that finish reappear. Now take Johanna's gold and start the highlighting. I have no idea how to pronounce this paint. <laughs> So whether it's highlighting or base coating or shading, I always try to use the biggest brush I can and that's just to ensure that I get the most coverage. Even on something like a 2 or a 1, you can usually get quite a fine point on there. So try to avoid dropping down to the zeros or the double zeros or the triple zeros just for the sake of it when you can achieve the same using a larger brush. For highlighting a model of this size, I use a zero normally and sometimes a one, but these numbers can change depending on the brand of brush you've got. But something like a double zero or triple zero can be quite difficult to keep moist and you may find that the paint dries quite quickly on the tip of the brush. Our final highlight for the gold is Rune Lord. Again, we only need to pick out the extremes here, so this should definitely be the quickest layer to apply. Now we're moving on to the non-metallics and we're going to be highlighting the fatigues with Dawnbreaker and then transitioning that highlight with Eshin Grey. So if you are looking to blend your highlights and firstly you need to thin down the Eshin Grey, probably more than normal. The aim is so that when you apply it on top of the Dawnbreaker it becomes semi-transparent and then moving from longer strokes to shorter strokes you can build up that gradient effect. If you've painted on too much ashen grey and you can see that there isn't a gradient between the two colours, then just reverse it, water down the Dawnbreaker and go the other way to build up that gradient. And if that doesn't work, go back the other way. And basically you can repeat the process back and forth using thin coats until you get the gradient you want. Now I'm highlighting with Administratum grey and touching up any mistakes with ashen grey. I'm also finishing off any blending I may have missed and if you're working with very thin paint don't overload your brush as this can cause the paint to pool on your model as if you're using a wash. And lastly, we're picking out some areas with a spot highlight of White Scar. The only thing left to paint now is that blue tube. So using the blending or glazing method that we've just been through, we're going to be building up a transition from light to dark. Here I'm using Temple Guard Blue, followed by the edge paint, Baharoth Blue. I really love edge paints, they're very vibrant, but they're also quite thick. So you may need to add some extra water or medium to the mix, just to get the paint thin and to the right consistency. And lastly, we're spot highlighting with White Scar to finish off the tube. Remember guys, you can use this guide as little 
or as much as you want. If you are an aspire and painter, then try out some of those transitional highlights. If you are just getting started, then focus on getting a clean base coat and getting a shade on top. It'll still look impressive, I promise you. And guys, that is the end of this week's episode. I really hope you've enjoyed. If you have, drop me a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And if you want to subscribe, please do so, because if you do, you are in with the chance of winning a brand new box of Skatari Rangers when the series comes to an end. And next week, you do not want to miss it, because that base, that lovely base that Skatari Ranger is on, we are going to show you how to paint it. And that includes the barbed wire as well. So, until then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.